Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kill Ten Rats. Welcome to Legends of Eisenwald, a old school style tactical RPG by Arterdox Entertainment, a development studio from Belarus. The game has been in development for quite some time. Started working on the game in 2010, as far as I know, and it's been in Steam Early Access for about two years. It's gonna come out tomorrow, July 2nd. We will start a full Let's Play of this game as soon as the full campaign unlocks. And since the tutorial area and the gameplay introduction that gives you a very good overview of what the game will be like is going to remain unchanged, we will just get that out of the way first. So I'll be doing that right away. So you can have a look at what we will be able to do here. You also, as you can see, have scenarios that you can play um, that are just sort of single map scenarios that are a bit more combat heavy. There are difficulty settings from easy, normal, difficult to ultra difficult. And ultra difficult is definitely a bit nightmarish. Um, we'll go with normal and we'll go with the Legends of Eisenwald campaign. At the last days of spring in 1422, you went to Holstein to visit an old friend and cohort of your father, Klauslin von Seidlitz, whose castle stands in the Lower Elbe. Berthold, your constant companion in any adventure, is with you. After coming ashore on the dawn of the day of St. John on Ravenna's day, you continued on foot and in a few hours you reached Seidlitz's lands. But your visit didn't go as expected. We have three character archetypes to choose from. This is a ranged character, this is your classic knight, and this is a sort of a more of a caster. This game is set in the Holy Roman Empire in the medieval days of the 15th century, but it has um, sort of low fantasy elements. So there is some alchemy, magic, uh, hedge magic, uh, werewolves, some monsters, but mostly it's just, you know, um, uh, troops of, of peasants and archers and knights fighting other troops of peasants and archers and knights and mercenaries and pikemen and all that sort of good stuff. We have a selection of coats of arms to choose from. We will be going with the knight and we will be naming him Heinrich just because that's the default name and that's also my grandfather's name so it's fitting. Um, it's... Uh, since we're just coming out of a Serpent in the Darklands Let's Play and Darklands keeps uh, coming up uh, quite often, I feel like this is more of a spiritual successor setting-wise to Darklands, at least since, you know, Holy Woman Empire, Middle Ages, some, some fantastic stuff is real, but mostly it's just you traversing the lands and doing medieval things. That sounds a little familiar to anyone who's played Darklands. In any case, Heinrich, uh, Castle Seidlitz, there's a warm welcome and a mug of excellent beer there, I'm sure. Berthold says, and hopefully a mug of warm wine. The trek through Goldstein swamps has seeped into my boots. Seems that dry land isn't too far away. And here we have the overland map. As you can see, there's these units already visible and they will pretty much move when we move. Berthold, your fidgeting is unnerving. This is clearly the right road. You said something similar in the swamps and we spent hours there. Then it's, then if proof is what you require, perhaps my map will satisfy you and your incessant worry. We can always check it to see if we are on the right path. Open the minimap and find Zeitlitz's castle. So here's your map and you can sort of plop down various map markers. You can also zoom in. Here's castle Zeitlitz, as you can see. We are down here. And there is a hunter in front of us. This is also a quest log where we can see what we have, what, what our task is at the moment. So, yeah, we found it. Let's meet up with the hunter. Good day to you, travelers. I come from Zeitlitz to escort you to the castle. I know these woods well. These lands are not foreign to me, friend. I know the way to Klauslin's castle. Oh, I don't doubt you do, my lord, but there's been trouble in these woods. We ought to avoid the more notorious paths if you take my parts, if you take my meaning. Then we'd best be on our guard. Let's be ready in case we run into trouble. Open the troop screen and make sure that your fighters stand in the right formation. Right, this is where we can open our troop screen. How do we do that again? I think this way. Yeah. Um, so you've got your formation, you've got your back row basically reserved for your healers or your ranged characters, but you can sort of put anyone every anywhere. So that's, um, you know, not, not, not a big deal. I think we can't put him in the back row, or can we? I think we can. 
He will, however, get a penalty to his aim if he shoots uh, over three hexes. So we should probably keep him somewhere around here. The combat system works a little differently than you might be used to. We'll probably spurs these two guys out a little bit so they can protect him a little better. And that's that. So let's move along and run into this dude. Fugitive peasant, welcome, good sirs, to the fine forest of its benevolent lord, Red Bestel. Now come along and we'll introduce you to the man himself. Come along peacefully now or things might not go well for you. I suggest you move along. Bestel doesn't take kindly to rude guests. And Bestel is sort of a bandit chief in this area. Now, one thing about the combat is that we are now playing as uh these guys in succession here you have the initiative order and as you can see there is a targeting circle around this gentleman here because he's the closest target if we were to select uh heinrich here he would be able to attack these two guys and he can attack pretty much everyone because he's an archer but if you like in general you can attack your your next target and that's basically your um movement uh, allocation. There is no separate movement, so I can't just click this hex and my character moves there. I have to attack. So there's definitely some tactical and sort of, I guess, uh, contrived elements to the combat. It's not, um, you know, movement phase and attack phase. It's it's like your attack phase doubles as your movement phase. So let's have Berthold go to town on this guy. And here we have our archer. I guess we can try to take out the enemy archer since he will do a lot of damage usually. And he's returning the favor, unfortunately. Now let's try to whittle this guy down. And there he goes. As you can see, there was the option to attack him as well. And we actually have a sort of a retaliation attack there. He can go here. I'm basically just trying to close in on this guy. So I'm basically trying to roll up the side flank here to get uh, the option to attack him. And there he goes. Let's do away with him now. And now we can see since they're equidistant from us, we can also attack the archer. So we finally made our way to him and he's down. And now this guy does pretty much does not stand a chance. He should be surrendering actually. Ah, oh, he didn't. There is a sort of a surrendering mechanic in the game. Uh, this is also where you get your loot at the end of a combat interval. So this is sort of how the overland travel in this game works. You can zoom in a little. These are the points of interest, like a summer fair. There's no point in going there yet. We will have to go there anyway, since it is a fairly railroaded tutorial. Ultimately, the game will not be as railroaded. It, uh, like Alexander, the lead developer, said that um, there is replay value in the game and the beta testers attested to this, uh, that the main campaign will have various branching paths where your choices will influence how it proceeds. So if you want to see the entire campaign and all the possible permutations, it'll be around two or three playthroughs. Although I have to say it's, it's not an open world game as such. Like we will go from this map to the bigger campaign map where uh, we go back to Heinrich's ancestral castle and uh, pursue his own personal storyline. Berthold will come with us because he's also from that area. And then we will just take it from there through all through the acts of the gameplay. The game is sort of separated into various uh, chapters, I think, or acts. And um, the choices you do make affect the, the next uh, step on the story, but it's not like you can sort of just roll on the quests in, in no particular order. There is some sort of element of, of uh, linearity in the narrative, but that's, you know, that's fine. Not every game doesn't have to be open world. It's, 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 it's a very, very good uh, tactical RPG game with uh, so some, some just different approaches to things. Ah, Klauslin's castle. I swear I can see him from here, ready to welcome us. If you want to see who is in an army or garrison, click with the right mouse button. Yes, indeed, we can do that. And here we see that Klauslin has an upgraded archer, some regular archers, and some... And this is him, the man himself, and he's got some uh, first front row fighters, but he doesn't have any healers, apparently. So let's go visit the man. Baron Klauslin Zeitlitz has changed little over the years. A little grey has seeped into his hair and beard and he retains the vigor and fierceness of the man you saw often in your father's company. 
Welcome, Sir Heinrich. It does my heart good to see you. Unless I am mistaken, I don't recall meeting your friend. Thank you for the welcome, Baron Zeitlitz. It's a pleasure to see you once again. Let me introduce you to Berthold, a loyal friend and comrade. He has saved me from the grasp of death more than a few times. You have a firm grip, Sir Berthold. It is fortune that brought both of you here. Please treat my home as your own. I hope there was no trouble on the way. We did encounter a little problem along the roads, bandits under the orders of a man called Red Bestel. Troubling news indeed, but not entirely surprising. It would be a shame to spoil your rival with a request, so both of you should rest now and regain your strength. Return to me when you are able, and we will discuss this further. I can see you are weary from travel and the recent battle. Make your way to St. Elena's church. Your wounds will be tended there. So here we can... Like, usually there's a, an interaction screen in these castles. But uh, since we are still in the do stuff to unlock stuff phase of this tutorial, we just have to make our way to St. Elena's church here. By the way, I am uh, probably going to pronounce some of the stuff as a uh, Baron and not Baron or, or Heinrich and not Heinrich, just because it comes more natural to me since that's my native language. Uh, we are in a church. There is always someone here who can wash and treat your wounds. And so there is. We can heal all. There are also healing items in the game. And those healing items will enable us to uh, reduce the fee we have to pay. So, or, or even not have to like pay at all. But there, there will be situations when, for instance, you, you have to pay like 150 uh, because your main character is injured. And you just drink some summer wine or what have you and end up being able to reduce it to like 60 or something. So it always pays to to check. You're looking a little better. Wonderful. Why not go and teach Red Bestel a lesson? That way you can repay the wrong that was done to you and at the same time rid me of the thorn in my side. You'll first need to gather some men to assist you. Let's start here. I have a man here in my castle that you can hire. Right, so we can hire this guy. And he's a front row fighter. And we can... I guess we can sort of get Berthold to be on the flanking uh, angle, uh, that way he's covered even better. And we head out of the castle. Wonderful, but infantry and archers are not enough for battle. First of all, you will need a healer, which you will find in the forest village. Second, a priest would not be such a bad idea. Don't be surprised, sometimes sincere prayer does more than sharp steel. Try St. Elena's church for such a man. Also, my young friends, I can see that you are not equipped for a fight. You can get something better at the summer fair. And for you, Berthold, I have something special. This is a horse, which an acquaintance brought from Hungary. We swore that the horse is a descendant of an Arabian stallion. It is too high-spirited for me, but you are a better match. I told my servants to hold him back for you in a village near the castle. Thank you, Lord Clauslin. I am flattered by such a valuable gift. And there we are. We can pick up Berthold's horse in Hawk village or Falkendorf I guess. <laughs> so Berthold Kreige, the Baron told us to give you this horse. Wonderful, I hope it's well trained. Once I had a stallion but I spend more time in the dirt than in the saddle. Well let me try to get my foot in the stirrup. Please note you have got not only the horse but also a pike since you can fight on horseback with your pike only. Right, so we can equip the horse. And I think the way it works is we can put the horse in here, and if we in if we equip them, uh, how does it work? I think, um, yeah, he, yeah, right. He needs to mount up. Like now he's now he's mounted. You need to equip the pike and the horse, and you need to click this to let let him mount, or you can dismount him again. So we'll have him on the side flanking on his courser. See how that goes for us. Here's the summer fair. We can pick up some more uh, neat stuff. We can get a better sword that we can buy. We can get a rusty armor. Uh, this uh, is uh, sort of randomly generated, by the way. So there will always be uh, different uh, items on, on different playthroughs. So uh, some of them will be constant, but the, the inventory of the merchant definitely changes over time. Here you have your uh, potions of regeneration and uh, healing, and we also have some um, we also have some items that that raise willpower and amulets that raise uh, just uh, your your spell casting proficiencies because we want to pick up a healer. Good, but new equipment isn't worth anything if it just does gathers dust among our baggage. Let's put it on. Yeah, we've already done that, my good friend. So. 
we will proceed to the next checkpoint, which is the church again. This is, by the way, this is fairly railroaded. The actual campaign, when it opens up, is a lot more open. It's not like anything I would uh, particularly describe as open world, but it's definitely more open. Right, so here we have our priest. We can give him the amulet. There is, by the way, an interesting mechanism in the game where... Uh, wait, I think that was the wrong amulet to give him. Did that not have healing on it? Oh, spiritual power. Okay, that's... Mm, nah. Uh, let's give you the ring. There is, situ there is a situation, for instance, this guy is a Catholic priest, right? And um, we can find amulets that are pretty good that are pagan, and he's not going to take them. Because <laughs> they go against his faith. So he's not going to... There is a lot of these little intricacies and details um, in, in the game. Okay, Forest Village. We can listen to the peasants, but they don't have much to say. Be well, Your Grace. Thank you indeed. And we can hire our healer and put her in the back row. And we can put the amulet on her. And that's that. Well, we have what we need to take on the Red Dog Bastel. Perhaps, but we need to find him first. We should ask Zeitlitz what he knows. Come now, my friend, there are many ways to gain information. We ought to enjoy a beer at the local tavern and sit back and see what we can learn from the talk of talkative locals. A sound plan, especially if there is drinking involved. And the tavern is right up here. So yeah, don't expect this to be like go from checkpoint to checkpoint and fight a little. There will be... Um, definitely will be more openness to the game and there will be side quests and random encounters and all that sort of thing on the actual campaign map. Let's grab some beer, but keep our ears open. Here we can listen to rumors. You sit a mug of beer in your hand, listening for rumors amidst the boisterous laughter, overwhelming din of conversation. And we can listen to the old lighthouse rumor, the Kusten Kautz a caper, that's the one we would like to listen to, and Fildras. Uh, that's actually the one we would like to listen to, Fildras. Did you hear? In the western forest, people saw Fildras. Who? Filras, how could you not have heard of him? He's a huge animal and eats like a pack of wolves, his body's like a bear, his paws like a dog and head like a cat, but much, much bigger. And who was drunk enough to see this monster, I wonder? He's real, I know it. Marta told me Bestel's men come off and to her, everyone knows that. They told her lately that Filras recently swallowed four of them, but they have no plans to leave that forest because they aren't cowards. Well, it seems we know where Bestel's gang resides, Berthold. Surely you don't fear this Filras. Me? Not likely. I think I know who he is. And we can listen to the Kustenkauts caper, since it'll be uh, important later on. There is no escape from the Kustenkauts brothers, that's why they were named so. Kustenkauts means old owl from the coast. Coastal owls are fond of fish and the brothers are after ships with goods. And when they catch them, praise God if they take the goods, nothing more. Brother, you think we do not know? We live next to them and suffer a great deal from them. The younger one disappeared recently, uh, recently. I hope to God he drowned. Hmm, Zeitlitz had little luck. Little luck with his allotment of neighbors. Oh, I'm fumbling my words pretty badly right now. Sorry about that. And that's enough for us now. So we know there are some nasty neighbors in this here castle, the Kusten Kautz brothers, who are what I would uh, describe as uh, robber barons or Raubritter, the uh, sort of a medieval toll troll scheme there. And here we have the forest. Now we just need to find an area where we can actually traverse it. Let me check. All oh, right, there is right there. There they are hiding. Okay, let's get to meet them. Sometimes a little awkward to click along the map if it's a hidden area, but it's not too bad. Oh, there's Red Bestel. Defeating a few men must seem like an impressive victory for you, but you were a fool to come here. I have enough men to finish you off. And there we go, preparing for battle again. And he opens up with an archer, which is unpleasant. Uh, we have the priest now. The priest can add um, a melee damage buff or a shield buff, or he can meditate to skip a turn and regain some of his resource will provide a blessing to our main character here, so we do a little more damage. And we go attack this guy. Like you see again, I'm trying to sort of outflank um, my... Uh, I, I will try to, to wrap around this way. And, and um, just 
get to the archer as, as early as I can because they will eventually end up targeting my backline. And that's really not something you want to happen. Now she can actually heal. Uh, I think we will heal uh, Berthold because he's getting a, a little bit of a beating. Oh, this guy is getting beat up. Oh, well. Uh, we'll shield him, maybe. Give him a shield of faith so he can take a little less damage next round. Okay, he's not attacking him, so he's not finishing him off. We'll go after this guy now. And Berthold is messing with his enemy. Archer going here. And then hopefully... I think he probably missed because he's... Uh, one, two, three. That should be fine still. He should be down now. That's fine. She's gonna do a bit of healing. Uh, we'll do a bit of healing on him. And we'll do a meditation round. And now we can go for this guy. Which is nice. And we'll also... Like, uh, we, we, ha we now have basically wedged him in a corner. And uh, I think that means he can't shoot anymore. Uh, because if we base him, then he is unable to pursue his ranged attacks. Ooh, he is getting hammered here. We should probably go in to save him. Yeah, let's finish this guy off. There he goes. Okay, they surrender. And here we have a little bit of loot, a bear claw amulet. This might actually be something that the priest wouldn't like. Some arrows, a better bow, and an armor. It looks like you underest it it looks like you underestimated us again. Say goodbye to your life, scum. Wait, don't kill me, I beg you. I was told to capture you on the way. It was not my wish. Most likely this cowardly rat is lying, but we may as well hear him out and then decide what, what to believe. I was under the command of Lord Küstenkautz, a neighbor to your friend Baron Zeitlitz. He told us to rob people and made us share the loot with him. We'll take this to Zeitlitz and see what he thinks of the allegations. So we have captured Red Bestel, the uh, infamous forest bandit. And now we can... Oh, right, we're a, bit, we're a bit slower moving through the woods. Now we're back on the road and move a little faster. That's also quite nice that the map accommodates for this. The game also really is not uh, pulling any punches in, in many ways. Like, um, if you are on the main campaign map later on, you'll have various random encounters running around there or other um, nobles running around there. Some of them are hostile and some of them will be will be way out of your league. This is even more the case in the scenarios. So essentially the game will also uh, encourage you to always check which enemy you're facing just by checking their unit setup and run away in, in uh, when in doubt, you know, when when you want to lift a fight another day. Clauslin, we finished off Bestel's gang. He swore during questioning that he acted under the orders of Küstenkauts. Do you think it could be true? I fear it must be. The Küstenkauts brothers are not the most reputable in the area. I have had many confrontations with them in the past. They have sunk ship and encouraged robbers. The younger brother has not been seen in many months. Not a good sign. It seems you have interesting people all around you, Baron. And what if we pacify Kustenkauts? We took care of the robbers, surely we can take on this so-called lord. You are not timid, Berthold, I grant you that, but you will have to take his castle, and you won't be able to do it with so few men. I'll give you some gold so that you can hire some mercenaries. Mercenaries, unlike regular soldiers, ask for daily pay, but don't need castle support. You're able to make your party significantly stronger by taking on mercenaries. In the local tavern, you're sure to find a few Landsknechts who are willing to, willing to fight for gold, hire mercenaries until you have at least eight fighters in your party. Only then can you attack Castle Kustenkauts. So, moreover, you should not hastily lay siege to the castle while the knight is there with his troops. It's possible that when he leaves his castle, there will only be a small garrison left defending. Hide in the old fisherman's hut on the bank. I doubt that Kustenkauts will notice you. Wait there until he and his men leave the castle. When his army is far away, attack the castle. Right, so we can do that. We can go to the tavern again and see to it that we get the mercenaries going. They are pretty expensive, so mercenaries are definitely just a short-term option. They will cost you like 50, 100, 150 
uh, gold uh, per day, and that's definitely a pretty, pretty hefty sum. Now let us go to the cow and spoon to pick up our mercs. We can also listen to the rest of the rumors, or we have a conversation with the rogue. I think we'll talk to the rogue. We have ears. And you also have some coin on you, yes? Well, yes, yes. As I said, Red Bestel and his man buried some treasure in a hideout. I can tell you where if you give me 50 gilder. Here's your gold. You slide a few coins over to him. He grasps it and Berthold slams his fist down on the man's hand. His fate, face contorts in pain. I'm no fool, so don't you play me false. Never! You will find the treasure in the ruins of the watchtower in the north bank. Why don't you get it yourself? You think I want to take on Red Bestel? You two probably could, but I... Yeah, okay. So we can hire some mercs. Uh, I think he's a crossbowman or something. Yeah, he's a crossbowman. We actually have an upgrade for this guy. So we should definitely give him that. And we also have an armor upgrade for him. That is nice. And we have a melee attack amulet, which we can give to our friendly party leader. As you can see, this guy is going to tally up at quite a bit of gold per day and so we shouldn't keep them in the party for much longer than we have to. We will go to the watchtower and grab the money from Bestel's treasure. Yeah, this is our upkeep. 390 per day, so really not your most viable long-term strategy. This is the old uh, watchtower that we're aiming for. So we can, uh, yeah, we, we can uh, expand our roster and our, our allotment of um, men. There is a sort of a castle system. We, we will have our own uh, stronghold eventually. And you can leave troops in a castle to garrison them. If they are in the castle, they will level up slowly by themselves. And so you can leave troops in the castle to train them. That's a rather nice mechanic. And you can also expand your uh, your allotment of people that you can take along by um, yeah by, by just uh, improving your castle and having more holdings and all that sort of thing. So we'll attack them from two sides here. Try to take this guy out so we can outflank them from here. We have this guy now, so he takes on this one, and he's dead. Heinrich is taking a bit of a beating. We'll go for this guy next. Glad that they don't have any ranged characters. We will heal our main character here. By the way, this is not a scenario where dead is dead. Um, if you quote unquote die in battle, you take a sort of a wound and are unfit to fight the next day. Or the next battle until you until you get healed which you can do at the churches and uh, that's a little costly okay the last guy surrendered that's nice and we are in the watchtower now in the ruins these are the remains of a watchtower that once guarded the north bank of the river this is the place that rogue from the tavern talked about and we can trigger an event once this watchtower must have looked over the valley whether it simply fell into disuse or was torn down by the fell hands of war it now lies in ruin you walk over a few stone locks looking for a chest or something that would resemble the treasure that rogue spoke to you of you eye a piece of metal hidden partially in the long grass it's a small thing a locked box the latch springs open easily enough you pull out a metal object and hold it up to the sunlight the runes etched upon it are pagan you slip it into a pocket quickly even a brigand wouldn't have wanted the church to find it on him so yeah, this is one uh, item that our priest will definitely not take, I suspect. There's the amulet, let's see. Yeah, the amulet of Samael, and we can't give it to him. Uh, okay, now let's give it to him instead. And be on our way. We haven't taken too much damage, so we should be fine to do the next encounter as well, which is the Kustenkauts brothers. This is their castle, and as we were advised, we can hide out down here in the fishing hut and wait for them to leave. So we'll do that, we'll hide in the fishing hut. 
They didn't seem to spot us on our way here. Now we just need to wait until Kusten Cows leaves the castle. And we can regulate the game speed. So we exit the screen. And we up the game speed. And eventually we should see Kusten Cows leave his estate. Come on, Kusten Cows. Don't be a Kusten Cows. Hmm. Pretty sure this is how it worked last time. Oh, we, we need to start a time flow. Yes, of course. Uh, I forgot about that. Time for a siege. Mere walls can't hold on. Can't hold out determined men. Uh, hang on. Okay. Uh, we can stop the time flow again. So it only moves when we move. And here we have the garrison, which is two of these ranged guys and two of the melee guys. And it's a rundown castle that was once a monastery. Now there is no real siege system, it's very simplistic. If you assault, then this is the damage you will take on your characters during the assault. And that's the configuration you start with, and this is the damage they will take. So if we feel this is something we can manage, uh, with the damage we're taking, um, for sieging it, we can begin the assault, and otherwise we can break it off. Right, so we can bless him. Oh, I, I think I just blessed myself. God damn it. Hmm. Okay, we've only lost one. <laughs> uh, let's go for the ranged character first, because they will be doing a lot of damage. Uh, over here. Wow. Pretty nasty. Hmm, damn it. Okay, that's, uh, tough. Uh, but we should be fine. Okay. Heal him. And yeah, ah, I think it's those pikes that give you sort of a, an extra attack uh, if you outrange the weapon that you're being attacked with. Um, we will shield him. Oh, crossbowman is under attack, and he's running away because he can't attack otherwise. And now we have to attack this guy, since we are being uh, based, so we can't just pursue him, since this is our closest target. Right, so we heal again. Should be okay, two ranged is really genuinely not a problem. Now he's based and can't attack. We can shoot him. And buff him. Okay, he's shooting. So... Mm. Yeah, let's get him down. Down he goes. And the other one surrenders, so we have beaten them. Body is littered the castle courtyard. Berthold approaches you, his sword bloodied from the battle. A fine fight indeed. Now that we have the castle, we shouldn't risk leaving. Kustenkaus could return at any moment, and it's best to wait for him behind the walls. Besides, we need to tend our wounds. Great, so we might not waste the time and go training now. Fighters who have earned enough experience to level up are marked with a golden arrow, and we can upgrade our fighters from the upgrade tab on the army screen. So let's do that quickly. This is the army screen, and this is the upgrade path. We can go for Iron Health as a base skill, Feudal, which is uh, more of an administrative skill tree, or Commander. I think we go Iron Health for this guy. He leveled up as well, so he'll be a, you know, second... Uh, uh, the first upgrade level of, of Archery. And she is going to change her dress and be a better healer. I don't think anyone else upgraded. But there's always like, th uh, for, for the main characters, I think, or for the named characters, there's always like two or three upgrade paths. And for the for the auxiliary troops, it gets a little more linear until it branches off at some point. 
This is a very costly heal, but we'll do it. And we will now wait for Mr. Küstenkauts to return. There he comes. Come on. There you are. You dare stand upon my walls while I linger here like a beggar? Beggar is too kind for your ilk, you who sent a dog to do your dirty work. You can try to take this place back, Kustenkauts, but you will find us harder to defeat than you suppose. And there we are. So he's not in the best position. Definitely not. And give our buff to Heinrich again. He's took uh, He took a lot of damage just from the onset of the siege already. I think we'll take out his healer. So they will stay down nice and damaged. Well, they should be surrendering pretty much right away. We'll take this guy down. And take this guy out. Oh, almost. And uh, we need a heal. We could use a heal. Now let's... Mm, what else we need? We can invigorate. That's a maximum bonus. Or regenerate. Uh, we will invigorate uh, him. Because he might get attacked. So he's down. And we'll close in on the archer so he can't do anything anymore. This guy is doing a hell of a lot of damage because he's the main guy, of course. And I think he'll probably wreck our poor uh, militia man here if we can't get him down first. But maybe we can, actually. We should have enough people able to close in on him. Yeah, this, this should be fine. Yep. We'll flank him and down he'll go. Oh, not really though. Hmm. Let's give a heal. And... Let's... Yeah, that should do it. Okay, let's close in from the other side and he will have his business done. Boing. And we get some more nice loot. Uh, some nice knightly armor. That windbag wasn't too much of a challenge for you. I'm glad our fortune still holds. Let's not test it further. Let's take the news to Zeitlitz. And we will do just that. Oh, I have the Super Turbo engaged. Turbo Junge, which is uh, probably not the greatest uh, way to play this game somewhat immersively. <laughs> Everyone just does the mega boost uh, across the map, but it can, of course, come in handy. And here we are back at Zeitlitz. You did astoundingly well. I am glad that my friend Leonard raised his son as a true knight, as would yours, Berthold. Alas, my father has passed from this world and I knew very little of him. It is a pity, but I may have met him many years ago. Perhaps it was your father. Could it be possible? Why not? If you want, we can talk about it in private. Once again, Heinrich, you have my sincere gratitude. Now, could you allow me a moment with Berthold? And there we are. And the next step is just going to be the transition into the main campaign. Quite the conversation you are having, but I fear I must interrupt. From the tower I spied a ship arriving at the pier. This does not seem to be a frequent event. Not frequent at all, and I fear it's not good either. Heinrich Berthold, go to the pier and find out who has disembarked. We shall do that. And it's going to be a messenger. There he comes. Are you Sir Heinrich? Oh, it's not going to be a messenger, actually. It's going to be an assassin, I think. Who wants to know? No need for that. I'll just have your head and be on my way. The messenger is coming in later, I think. <laughs> uh, I have a message for you. I want you to die. Oh, actually... Uh, why wasn't he on his horse? Oh, okay, because... We, yeah, I think there are some areas where you can't fight on horseback. Uh, let's charge in. Uh, I think he's got a mystic. Uh, that's not too convenient. Mm. Oh well. Archer's up next. Target the back row immediately. And we'll try to make our way to the back row. Wow, that was nice damage. Yeah, he's he's trying to fear us. Uh, okay, we'll invigorate Bathold. And 
close in on this guy. That way we should be able to base the archer next turn. Oh nice, they don't focus them down, that's very nice of you. Go on you then. And more attacks on this guy because he's dangerous, but he's also not very sturdy. Uh, yeah, let's charge him. Our, our horseman can charge into the back row here and take him out. Uh, who do we have up? We have the priest. Let's give a shield to Heinrich. And, oh, wow, that was nasty. They are pretty high level in a way. Uh, shoot him. And heal. Uh, can we actually? Yes, we can. We'll heal him. Ooh, lightly stunned. That actually means there's sort of a debuff on our character. Ah, we didn't kill him. Uh, this should take him out. Okay, very nice. Now Berthold. Uh, why can't Berthold go for this guy, I think? Oh no, this guy is up. Okay, right. Um, Berthold has to go for this guy. Yeah, there we go. Come on. Wow, that was a nice one. And... Mm, meditate. Uh, shoot him. There he goes. That leaves some healing for our friend here. And this guy apparently doesn't want to surrender. He wants to cause us more grief. Oh, that's fine. He will not be long for this world. There we go. Berthold checks the leader's body and pulls a piece of paper from a pouch. He looks at it closely. It seems that our friend had something that belongs to you. This letter bears the, bears the seal of your house and it seems to have been opened. This is from my father. He asks that I return as soon as possible. It seems that storm clouds are brewing over my lands. Someone must have not wanted you to see that. Whatever the case, homeward we go. Let us say our farewells to Zeitlitz. And that's indeed what we are going to do. We have received the news in a very roundabout way of a messenger. Uh, that we have trouble in the homeland. You meet with Zeitlitz and show him the message. He looks concerned and paces about the hall. There is no need to leave by way of Vedel. The weather is good, so leave directly from the pier. But also, please give your father this package. It is the final point of an argument we never finished. Unfortunately, it looks like I will win it. Ah, you seem confused by my words. Shouldn't I want to win? I, but pay no heed. You'll learn the reason from my words soon enough. Circumstances don't allow me to go with you, but if you need any help, talk to Werner von, St von Sterch. An old friend to your father and me. As I hear it, he is now a chancellor in the Duke's court, which means he carries great influence. And he won't leave the son of an old friend in trouble. God be with you. Right. So, we have pretty much completed the tutorial. I'll just um, leave it here, because the next step will be to go to the main campaign map, and I'll just wait for... Atterdux to patch in the final release version of the game in the next couple of hours at which point we will go to Hans Pier and embark on our ship that takes us all the way to the home barony of Heinrich here. I hope I gave you a little bit of an insight into what this game can be like. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.